Okay, let's take a look at um, last chapter, chapter eight, modeling with differential equations. So the first thing is to look over kinematics. So um, displacement is, use, we use letter S, velocity and acceleration. So if you differentiate displacement, so differentiate, you will get velocity. If you differentiate velocity, you will get acceleration. So velocity is equal to the displacement differentiated. Acceleration is equal to velocity differentiated. Or you could differentiate displacement twice to get the acceleration. Now, if you go the other way around, so if you integrate acceleration, you will get velocity. So velocity is the integral of acceleration. And if you integrate um, velocity, you will get the displacement. This is all integrated with respect to time. There you go. So let's start example one. You've got a point a particle P that starts from rest at a point O and moves along a straight line. At time t seconds, the acceleration is a equals 6 over t plus 2 squared. And we have to find velocity. So velocity is obviously to get acceleration, we must have differentiated velocity. So velocity is the acceleration that has been um, integrated. Okay, so this one is going to be 6 times t plus 2 to the power of minus 2 dt. Okay, so add 1 to the power, divide by that power because the black bracket is linear. So that will give me 6 divided by minus 1, t plus 2 to the power of minus 1 plus c. So we are told that initially the particle is at rest, so at time t equals 0 the velocity is equal to zero so we can find what c is so let's pop it in here zero is equal to six of the minus one is minus six times two to the power of minus one plus c so that's going to be minus six over two is minus three move it across it's three so velocity let's pop it here it's going to be minus 6 over t plus 2 plus 3 meters per second. Okay, then we have to show that at the time t equals 6, the displacement is 18 minus 12 ln 2 meters. So to find um, the displacement, uh, we're from uh, velocity, we need to integrate velocity. So the displacement is the integral of minus 6 over t plus 2 plus 3. Okay, so this is ln, so it's minus 6 ln t plus 2 plus 3t plus c. So again, let's think about it. Initially, it's at rest, so this displacement is zero, and initially time is zero. So let's sub it in to find the value of c. So it's zero is equal to minus six ln zero plus two, so two, plus zero plus c. So s is equal to minus six ln of t plus two, plus 3t, and then c from this one is 6 ln 2, plus 6 ln 2. Let me just go on to a different uh, side. So, t plus, I'll just check, t plus 2, and then we've got 3t, plus 3 ln 2, obviously in meters, 6 ln 2. Okay, so now we are finding uh, the value of s when t is equal to 6. Okay, so it's minus 6 ln of 6 
plus 2, which is 8, plus 3 times 6, which is 18, plus 6 ln 2. Combine these two together, so that gives me uh, 6 ln of 2 over 8, plus 18. So it's 6 ln of a quarter, plus 18, which gives me 4 to the power of minus 1. Uh, just check what form they wanted the answer. 18 minus 12 ln 2, so we want to not factorise it. So it's 18 minus 1 comes in front, so minus 6 ln 4, but they want it in terms of 2, so this is 2 squared. So it's 18 minus 6 times ln 2 squared, which is 18 minus, bring it down. 12 ln 2 as required. I put it in brackets and put the units here measured in meters. Good, so let's have a look at example 2, another application of a kinematic question. So we've got acceleration this time, and its uh, particle p is moving along a straight line at a time t. The acceleration is this meters per second per second and we are given that at time t equals 2 velocity is 0 we have to show that velocity is ct cubed minus t squared okay so uh, remember the acceleration needs to be integrated so to get velocity so we are going to find the integral of t over 3 over t dt and that will give me velocity. So this is going to be a half of t squared at 1 to the power divided by that power. And then 3 ln t plus c. So we are told that initially vo velocity is 0. Not initially, at time t equals 2. So 0 is equal to a half times 2 squared plus 3 ln 2 plus c. So C is going to be, that's going to give me 2, to, so it's minus 2 and minus 3 ln 2. So overall velocity is a half T squared plus 3 ln T minus 2 minus 3 ln 2. Okay, example two. So over here we've got uh, acceleration given. Particles moving in a straight line at the time t. The acceleration is given by the following equation. And we are told that at t equals two, uh, velocity is equal to zero as well. So uh, the first thing we need to notice is that um, acceleration, we're looking for velocity. Okay, so the velocity is equal, we're showing the ct cubed minus t squared. Okay, so we're looking for the equation connecting velocity with time. So acceleration, remember, is the um, uh, velocity differentiated, so we can replace it with dv dt. Okay. So this is the differential equation because we're trying to find the value of v, so we need to undo differentiation 
and you notice dvdt here it's, it's not separating variables we have to see if we can use integrating factor because it's the first order differential equation and you can notice that you do have it in the right form that would be your dy dx and that would be your y and this is a function of x which is in terms of t here on both sides so yeah integrating factor is e to the power of the integral of minus 3 over t dt that gives me e to the power of minus 3 ln t and bring that minus 3 as the power so you have t to the power of minus 3 so the solution on the left hand side so it is going to be v times uh, t to the power of minus 3 and then this side needs to be multiplied by t to the power of minus 3 and integrated So we've got to integrate t to the power minus 2. So that gives me add 1 to the power divided by that power. So it's minus 1 over t plus c. But we are told that at time 2, t equals 2, velocity is equal to 0. So if you sub it in, that gives me 0 on the left hand side, minus a half plus c. So c is equal to a half. So velocity times t to the power of minus 3 is equal to minus 1 over t plus a half. So let's get rid of that t to the power of minus 3. So we times everything by t cubed. So it's minus 1 over t times t cubed plus a half times t cubed so that gives me a half of t cubed minus t squared so c is equal to a half okay so example three in the in this chapter which is chapter eight modeling with differential equations is probably one of the hardest ones in the um whole of year two book in my opinion uh however good news is that i think if you do get a question like this it's got to be something really similar um there is uh, this example which is worth going over and coming back to it there is a, one or two questions like this in the exercise and maybe i could find one or two like that in the um uh, any practice papers that or specimen papers that the exam board published so don't worry before the exam we'll go over these several times so you should be fine with those okay so here we've got the scenario i've got a storage tank that initially contains a thousand liters of pure water and liquid is removed from the tank at a constant rate of 30 liters per hour and then a chemical solution is added at the same time at a constant rate of 40 liters per hour. So the solution contains four grams of copper sulfate per liter of water. So given that there are X grams of copper sulfate in the tank after a certain amount of time, so T hours, and that the copper sulfate immediately disperses throughout the tank on entry. So disperses means it's uniformly is distributed throughout the liquid that's inside the container. So then show that the situation can be modeled by dx dt equals 160 minus 3x over 100 plus t. So the good news is we've got something to aim for. So we can check that our thinking is correct. So let's actually draw a picture to go with this uh, situation. So here's the tank. There you go. Inside the tank goes every hour four grams of, not four grams, 40 liters of liquid. But inside this liquid, that's a solution. That means within that liquid water, uh, the chemical copper sulfate was um, diluted. So for every of this litre, there's four grams of copper sulfate. So altogether, there is 40 times four grams per 
hour, I think, that goes in order of the unit. So it's 160 grams per hour we are adding in. Now, at the same time, we are going to release some liquid. So some of it is dripping away or it's pumped out of the container. So for every hour, 30 litres goes out. So it's minus 30, but this one litres. Okay, 30 litres. So this is the volume. So inside those 30 litres, there will be some amount of uh, copper sulphate because obviously once you start putting the copper sulphate solution in and it's distributed evenly, whatever comes out will contain some of that. So for every litre, you're going to have a certain amount of um, copper sulphate so we need to find it so we need to we need to find how much of copper sulphate is uh, exiting the tank so that's what we need to do because overall we're not in interested in the change rates of change of volume we are interested in finding the rate of change of x and x is the amount of copper sulfate in the tank at the particular time t so we want dx dt okay so the first of all, first of all, let's just start thinking about that. Every hour for every unit of time, 160 goes in. But then that amount escaped. So it's 30 litres times something. We need to work out what that something is. So what we need to, in what this needs to represent is how much of X escapes altogether so let's see how much there is in one liter okay so how are we going to do it well it's simply it's it's for me it's like density or concentration so this is going to be concentration of the chemical in the tank okay so every hour there is x amount of copper sulfate but it's spread over the whole tank so over the total volume of li the liquid so what is that total volume well think about it we are initially having a tank full of a thousand liters of pure water we are every hour we are adding 40 litres of liquid so f it doesn't matter that it contains something it's how much volume so we are adding 40 litres of volume that's every hour well if it was two hours we would have added 40 times two if it was three hours 40 times three so it's 40 times the number of hours that passed but at the same time we have 30 litres escaping of some kind of liquid. So it's 30 litres in the first hour. By the time the second hour is passed, it will be twice as much. So 30 times two, twice as much, and then three times as much. So it's 30 times T at the time T. So altogether, a volume of liquid is 1000 plus 10 T. So that gives me this concentration X being spread across or shared across 1000 plus 10 T litres. And that represents the density. So if I times that by that, those litres here that escape, that's how much of X will escape in one hour. Okay, because in every litre, this is how much I have, times it by 30, and I should get my answer. So just need to tidy it up, divide 30 by 10, divide the denominator by 10, 
So I'll have 160 minus 3 times x, which is 3x, over 100 plus t. So that's part A. Okay. Part B, we are going to find the number of grams of copper sulfate after six hours. So after six hours, what happens? How much x we have? So we need to have an equation that connects t and x or x and t. So that simply is saying to us, solve this. So this is an example of uh, integrating factor because it's the first or the differential equation and you've got dx dt and then you've got x multiplied by a function of t. So this x acts like normal like y and t like x. So the integrating factor is e to the power of the integral 3 over 100 plus t dt and that gives e to the power of 3 ln 100 plus t. Uh, bring it to the power. So you've got e to the power of ln 100 plus t all cubed. So it's 100 plus t cubed. Okay, so the solution on the left hand side, you're going to put, remember, it's integrating factor times that function p of x and then on that side you've got the integral of integrating factor times the function q of x or whatever was on the right hand side so integrating factor is a thousand plus t all cubed multiplied by um not p of x rubbish uh, times by y if it was y which is here x and over here, we've got to put the integral of 160 times the integrating factor, which is 100 plus t all cubed. So, integrate the right hand side. And we are going to get 160 divided by 4. So that's going to be 40 and add 1 to the power divide by well, the coefficient of t, which is 1. So that's the answer. But we are told uh, to find... OK, so we need to actually think about what happens. How am I going to find the value of c? So it says initially contains a 1,000 litres. So in those 1,000 litres, there is no chemical. So x is equal to 0 at initial time. So t is equal to 0. So that will become zero. Over here, we get 40 times 100 to the power of 4 plus C. That gives me C is equal 100 to the power of 4 is 10 squared to the power of 4. So 10 to the power of 8 and then times 40. So 10 to the power of 9, if you write it quickly like this. So let me just quickly put it together on this piece of paper. So we've got 100 plus t to the power of 3 times x is equal to 40 times 100 plus t to the power of 4 plus 4 times 10 to the power of 9. So at time equal to 6, we will have x is equal to 40 times 106 to the power of 4 plus 4 times 10 to the power of 9 divided by 106 to the power of 3. Pop it into the calculator. Hopefully get the right answer. So it's going to be 40 times 106 to the power of 4 plus 4 times 10 to the power of 9 and then 106 to the power of 3. No, oh, that doesn't look right. What have I done wrong? Let me just double check. I'll come back. Okay, I've made a mistake. I think here with the value of C, C should be minus here. Good job, I checked it. Minus 
mine. Let's just double check if I go back to this. Yeah, that looks better. 882 grams to three significant figures. There you go. And that means you are... Oh, okay, part C. So in part C, we've been asked to refinement, to give refinement of the model. So how can the model be refined? Okay, so in this particular case, we could make it better by take into account and account uh, the fact that the chemical does not uh, disperse disperse uniformly or you could say um, what they say is they say um, yeah all disperse immediately or in the place it immediately both of them are fine as it enters.